Let's install Gradle on your Mac using Homebrew. And when we're done, let's verify our installation by generating a Spring Boot 3 app, and then package it up as an executable jar using Gradle. Java is a requirement to run Gradle, so let's verify that we've got Java installed on our machine. To do that, we'll open the terminal and type in java-version. Any version of Java 8 or greater will work. Since I have version 17 on this machine, we're all good, so let's continue. Next, let's check and make sure we don't have Gradle installed already, so we'll run gradle-version. And we see that it's not installed, so let's continue. In this video, we're going to install Gradle on our machine using the package manager called Homebrew. If you don't already have Homebrew installed on your machine, check out this video on installing Homebrew for your Mac. And when you're done, come back here and finish up your installation of Gradle. To install Gradle from a terminal, we'll type brew install Gradle. And that will start the installation of Gradle on your machine. My version is doing an auto update, which is fine, but it can be a bit slow, so I'll speed up the video. Homebrew will download and install some dependencies to install Gradle. This list of dependencies will depend on your Mac and what packages you currently have installed. Most of the packages for me are related to graphics. Gradle has a unique way of presenting data as it performs tasks, so these are necessary to render that display. Once it's done, let's verify the installation of Gradle by typing in Gradle space dash version once again. This time we see that we've installed the latest version of Gradle, which for me at the time of this recording is 8.1.1. By the time you watch this video, that version may be different, but either way, at this point, you've successfully installed Gradle. Let's give our new installation of Gradle something to do and verify our environment is set up and working to build Java projects. We'll open a browser and go to start.spring.io. Here we'll generate a Spring Boot 3 application and then build it with Gradle. We'll add one dependency. Let's add the web starter to our project. Notice our project by default will be built using Gradle. We'll accept all the defaults, then scroll down to the bottom and click Generate. We'll allow downloads so the site can send us the generated code. Back in our terminal window, let's cd into the downloads directory and run ls. We can see the file demo.zip that we just downloaded. We can open that up by running unzip space demo.zip Let's run ls again, and we see the directory called demo was created for us. Let's cd into that directory and run find space dot. This shows us all the files that were generated for us, including the Java code, demo application, and demo application tests. For Gradle, the two most important files are build.gradle and settings.gradle, which are used to configure our project and define things like dependencies, plugins, tasks, and other customizations we may make to our build process. Let's run ls to see the files in the current directory. And now let's run the Gradle tasks command. This starts up the Gradle daemon and shows us a list of tasks available for us to run for this project. Scrolling up, we can see some of the important ones, including build and boot jar. Now let's run Gradle space build. That will compile and test our code. It was successful. To build an executable jar with Gradle, let's run Gradle space boot jar. This task comes packaged with Gradle projects and will package your application along with any dependencies and configuration into a standalone executable jar file. Let's go ahead and find that executable jar and run it. We'll cd into the build directory and then into the libs directory and run ls. The snapshot.jar is the executable jar created for us. So let's run that by typing java-jar demo 001 snapshot.jar. Our web application starts up. We can see it's listening on port 8080. We didn't add any endpoints, so there's nothing we can do with the app other than see that we have a functioning Spring Boot 3 project ready to use. All right, that's it. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.